Hi, my name is Paddy Hirsch. I'm a senior editor at Marketplace. Today I want to talk about dark pools. These are not dwelling places for ancient sea monsters. They're actually exchanges where shares are bought and sold. But unlike the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, they're not public. So you can't tell who's buying and who's selling. They're actually all the, the trading is actually done in the dark. So how does it work and why are people slightly concerned about it? Let's uh, see if we can explain. Okay. Okay, as in any exchange, you've got a buyer and a seller. So let's have a look at our seller. Here he is, his name's Sam. Okay, and Sam runs a large, uh, a large pension fund, and he's got a large block of shares that he wants to sell. Now, if you're, a pen if you're involved in a large pension fund like Sam's, people are watching you all the time very carefully to see what you're doing because you can be kind of a bellwether for the market or certainly an indicator of what other investors should do. So here he is with his large block of GE shares. Okay, let's say there is a billion dollars. Okay, and he wants to sell these. If he went to the New York Stock Exchange, a number of things would happen. Firstly, people would see Sam come into the market and they'd be like, ooh, so Sam has got a large amount of GE shares to sell. That might send a message of it in, in itself and move the market. I mean, imagine if Warren Buffett comes out as a seller. People know he's got a big block to sell. That certainly does things. Secondly, the amount that he has is, is very large. And when you chuck a large amount of shares like that into the market, it, it creates a ripple. And it can actually impair uh, what you're going to be able to sell uh, those shares for. So, I mean, say they're trading at uh, you know, $150. He may have to break the, uh, the, the, the block down in order to sell it because it's difficult to find people who want to take a billion dollars at one go. So he has to break it down. And as he pushes the shares into the market, you know, people see the weight of it. And that, and that, that so-called technical pressure pushes the price down. So maybe in the end, the last block that he sells only gets $120 um, a share. So he ends up with, in aggregate, much less than he would get if he sold the whole thing at one go. Okay, so Sam, when he looks at the New York Stock Exchange and he looks at the amount that he wants to sell, maybe he says to himself, you know what, maybe I'd, I'd like to do this somewhere else. Maybe I'd like to do this in a dark pool. Okay, so he goes out and he looks out for a dark pool, and there are many these days. And he, uh, he finds one, one that's suitable, and, uh, you know, looks good to him. So he, uh, straps on his, his, he straps on his mask, his snorkel, and he jumps right on in. And when he gets in there, it's very dark inside, okay? That's the reason it's called a dark pool, because it is dark. And people are in here, they're all whispering to each other, okay, I've got a bit of GE here. I'm looking to buy some GE. It's all whispering to each other, communicating, telling each other electronically what it is that they're looking for and what it is that they have. So Sam's in there, he's whispering through the electronic system that he's got a billion dollars of GE to sell. And the system, the electronic system, matches him up with another buyer, totally anonymously. Nobody knows who's in. Nobody knows who the buyer is. Nobody knows who the seller is. None of these people know who they are. They're all just connected in this dark pool electronically. Okay, so here's Sam with his mask on, and, uh, and here's his buyer. His buyer says, yep, I'll take, uh, I'll take a billion dollars of GE. So the transfer is made. Okay, so our GE shares go across. Once the transaction's made at the price that uh, you know, Sam was looking to sell at, everybody hops back out, and they get back on with their lives. But the first thing that Sam does, or one of the first things that Sam does, is he announces to the world that he's made this trade. He's a public company, he's a public uh, pension fund. He's got he's to be upfront about his trades. So he lets people know that he sold that billion dollars in GE. Now the buyer may not necessarily be a, uh, a public pu fund. It could be a, a private equity fund, it could be a hedge fund. But uh, in this case, the buyer's name is Elisa. Here she is. And uh, she also uh, is involved in a, a public pension fund. So she lets people know that she has bought a billion dollars in General Electric stock. And there we go. Now the world knows and the world can go uh, about its business. And maybe the market will react to that. Maybe it won't. Maybe it will react to the fact that Sam has sold. Maybe it won't. But it certainly won't react to, uh, to the fact that the sale is happening at the time that it's happening. And that's really what Sam wants to avoid. So it's easy to see why Sam would want to get involved in this. And also Elisa, because say she wanted to buy a block of a billion dollars, it might be quite difficult to do that in the, in the public market because Sam might feel that um, he's forced to, uh, in, the, in the stock exchange, New York Stock Exchange that is, he, he, he might feel that he's forced to break it up into pieces and Elisa might not get the, uh, the, full, the full whack that she wanted. Okay, so there is, a, uh, there is an advantage for Elisa there as well. The people that there is less of an advantage for, arguably, are individual investors. Because these dark pools are, genuine, are generally used primarily by large institutional investors and, pe and, and, large, and people with large amounts of money. You've obviously sort of minimum amounts to trade, and so it shuts um, a proportion of the market out. 
individual investors or smaller investors who aren't trading these sort of gargantuan blocks are then kind of left on the sidelines. And there's a real concern that, well, there are two concerns. The first concern is that um, these dark pools are kind of sucking energy and sucking um, activity away from the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ, and obviously those that the exchanges are very worried about that. The second concern is that a lot of the, it, it means that as these, uh, as these um, dark pools uh, become more numerous and take up more space, it means that much more activity, much more of the stock trading activity is going on in the dark. It's going on in secret, away from the public eye. The great thing about the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ and other exchanges is that it's all public. You know who the buyer is, you know who the seller is, you know how much is being traded at any one time. In these dark pools, you have no idea until the trading is done. In some, in some cases, if, if it's done by private sellers, if Sam and Elisa were both public at private equity funds, for example, you might never know a trade had occurred at all. So there's a real concern that uh, because all of this activity is being conducted in the dark and away from the public, it means the public are, are less empowered, have got less power, and have less uh, knowledge um, to, uh, to be able to transact with their own shares and their own sales. And uh, that's one of the reasons that there's a lot of muttering going on about maybe these dark pools should be regulated or perhaps uh, controlled in some other ways. I mean, let's face it, if you're an individual investor and you want to, to buy or sell GE and you know that you're, you're hoping to get a certain price for it and then suddenly an enormous transaction like this occurs and you find out the day after or uh, the minute after uh, Sam has announced his dark pool trade that GE's traded at a certain amount, perhaps the price falls away. Perhaps that, you know, the, the market drops away from underneath you. You've been hoping to get a certain price for your tiny little block of shares. But if you were counting on that money, let me tell you, I think it could very badly leave you needing a very large drink. <laughs>